Hey guys, welcome to another vlog. It is the afternoon. I spent this morning wrestling with some technology, <laughs> which had put me in a bad mood, but I've snapped out of it. So I'm just gonna get ready for the day. I'm also going out for dinner tonight, which of course I will take you along, uh, along with us. And I am meeting up with my friend and his wife, and my husband is coming along. We are going to Javier's at Aria. This friend of mine, you may know him because I have definitely mentioned him on my channel before, I think I maybe have even mentioned him on my like community tab, but his name is Ivan. His channel is Hey Ivan, exclamation point, and he does like little tech tips, like just real down to earth answers, like everyday kind of questions, tech tips, which I think is invaluable. And I kept, you know, encouraging him to just start the channel and keep going or whatever. So yeah, he's having a lot of fun doing it. And I worked with him at my last corporate job where I was a technical trainer at a law firm. So he was based in LA. I was based in New York. LA actually was our headquarters. New York was a satellite office. And he, you know, while I didn't report to him technically, he was much senior to me and was just so much more knowledgeable than most of the other people on, on our team, including my, <laughs> including the person that I reported to. So anyway, I feel like Ivan was my boss and we've just stayed friends. He's just a fantastic guy. Super friendly. Definitely check out Hey Ivan <laughs> if you get a chance. But anyway, that's what I'm doing tonight. But I did want to get ready for the day and you know make myself a little bit more presentable. I wanted to film some shorts because I got the Lisa Eldridge liquid lipsticks in and I actually put on my Lisa Eldridge lipstick charm for the occasion. Yeah, so I wanted to put on like all of my makeup and then do that shorts and I'll link that shorts down below if you're interested. I'm just gonna do some swatches. She sent me seven out of the eight new shades. So I'm really, really excited to try them. She sent me definitely the one shade that I think I would use the most. Well, both, two of them, Fawn and Dragon. So I'm really excited to try them on. I wanted to kind of play around. So I've been really going hard with the Westman Atelier liquid super loaded highlights. As you guys know, I've been using the Pot de Rose underneath my eyes. I've been adding either the Pot de Rose or the Pot de Peche to the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. So I've been using them a lot and I wanna keep experimenting with them. And you guys know how much I love the Dr. Jart BB Premium Beauty Balm. So I wanted to mix it in with this. I'm not sure, or I should say, I don't want it to actually change the shade or like the tone of this because I do think that there's some sort of tone mimicking situation going on with this. But what I do want to do is give like more of a, a sheen to this particular product. This product is great. It just looks so skin-like, but I wouldn't mind adding a little bit of, you know, a little bit of highlight to it. So I am going to pump out what I normally pump out. I think I use like two pumps of this when I use it. And then I'm sitting here debating whether or not I want to use the Pot de Peche or the Pot de Rosé. This is how it comes out. It's a very neutral, cool, um, tone leaning looking foundation. But like I said, I think it kind of just mimics your skin tone. So I'm going to go with Pot de Peche actually. Yeah, because I feel like the Pot de Rosé, I just... I don't know. I don't want to run the risk of making the foundation look too cool. So I'm just going to drop just one drop. One drop will do you. And I'm going to use my Bobbi Brown foundation brush here and just sort of mix it in on the back of my hand and then just apply. Like see how cool toned it looks when I first apply this product, but then when I work it in, it just, I don't know, it just sort of becomes very much like my skin tone, which is why I'm convinced there's some tone mimicking technology in this BB cream. Now, I've never been one to, you know, get into like mixing different things and like creating concoctions and then like applying it to my skin. Not that I don't think it's super cool, not that I don't think you could definitely benefit from that. I'm just generally pretty lazy. But do you guys remember Alana Davison? She, she was like queen of concoctions. She would like mix two or three things together to create her foundation. And I was always so envious that she had the like, the not the energy, but just like the wherewithal to do it. Because you know, I take out a foundation, I just like throw it on. I never, I don't know, I'm so like mindless sometimes when I put on makeup. So anyway, just mixing those two things together kind of reminds me of Alana. So here is my, I'm telling you, this stuff just makes everything look better. I loved the BB Balm. I really, really liked the Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. However, just adding a tint of this, a drop of this, it's just better. Everything just looks smoother and more flawless with this added into it. Uh, so I think I'm gonna jump to powder. I'm gonna use my Makeup Forever HD tw Twisty, Twisty Guy. I'm gonna use my BK Beauty 102 brush. Maneuver it in there. Such 
pretty powder. The finish of it really, really reminds me of the Kogendo loose powder that I love. Use my Surat bronzer. I'm really using a lot of the same things I have been using. And essentially, these are basically my favorites for the month. The West Mid Atelier drops, that loose powder from Makeup Forever, this bronzer from Surat. I have even been enjoying this bronzer as blush. So I'm just putting it onto my cheekbones too. And because I just love a glorious highlight. I've been using this highlight from the Blush and Glow palette from Hourglass. You definitely don't need a lot. It is extremely shiny, <laughs> as you can see. Just gonna throw on the Chantecaille brow gel and I'm just gonna use this until it's gone. It is quite nice and I like that in their brow gel selection, they just have like dark and light. <laughs> And I do feel like the dark works for a very wide range of brows because if you look at this gel, it's actually much, I don't want to say much, it's lighter than a shade that I would pick for myself, but it works. And then, you know what I'm going to try, which I have not tried yet. And I keep thinking and then I always forget, but I'm going to take the new Sonia G Worker Large brush. I love the Sonia G. I really am kind of doing a favorites, aren't I? I here we are. These are my monthly favorites. I love, love, love the new Sonia G Fundamental set. Here are the six brushes for the Fundamental set. I have been using them nonstop. The fan brushes, can't get enough of them, using all three all the time. Love to use this for like a light highlight application as opposed to the fan brush that I just used, Fan Brush A. This is great for something like a little bit lighter. It's a wispier kind of brush. This is fantastic. I don't know, I just love this for like the apples of my cheeks. This is so great. And then this Worker Large brush, I was very, very excited for. I just haven't used it yet, so I'm gonna use it. I'm actually gonna try applying the bronzer as eyeshadow since this whole bronzy monochromatic latte look is so hot right now. We're gonna go full force here. And I always forget when I add like blush or bronzer on as eyeshadow, I forget how much less pigmented these products are versus eyeshadow. And so I'm really careful like picking up product, but I don't, I don't need to be. What do we think? I kind of like it. Although I'm always surprised at how different the same bronzer looks on my eyes than it does on my cheeks. It's so much peachier on my eyes. I definitely want to add some eyeliner to just kind of break this up a little bit. I got this Makeup Forever eyeliner probably more than a year ago at this point, but it was something I got because Hung Van Gogh, that makeup artist, he's probably one of my favorites at this point. I watch all of his videos. He used this in a look, probably as like a precursor to this whole latte makeup look trend. He he used this like all over the eye, this shade, which is called Total Taupe. It's shade number 508. I don't even know if it's still around. That's how long ago I purchased this, but isn't that just perfect? So it's a little bit deeper, a little bit cooler than what I have going on. So there, just gonna curl my lashes. Use my Lancome Lash Idol Mascara. All right, I'm going to leave my lips bare because I'm gonna do that shorts now where I'm swatching the new Lisa Eldridge lippies. I'll leave a link to that shorts down below and I'll be back. I'll try and end with the one that I think that I'm gonna like the most. I think I'll do that. All right, I just finished filming my Lisa Eldridge shorts. I still don't like the way my shorts look. I really have to figure that out. I think I need to use a different camera because I'm either grabbing my iPhone or this vlogging camera, which I think looks fine this way, but it doesn't look fine the other way. Anyway, I ended on the shade Affair, which seem like the warmest, which would kind of go, well, the warmest and like, um, well, yeah, the, the warmest. I was gonna say the warmest and the most kind of like nude color, but all of the deeper colors, which you will have seen in the shorts, they're kind of like pink leaning. So they're cooler toned, pink or purple leaning. And then, you know, there's dragon, which is probably the warmest. It's cause it's almost orange, but it's like a bright, <laughs> a bright orange situation, which I wasn't going for. So this is a fair this one. I really like it. I'm going to hold off on commenting on the formula. 
Well, I will say this, when you apply it, it feels almost like a lip oil. Like it is very, very comfortable when you apply it. However, I'm holding off on how it feels because I just lip swatched seven of these. And so my lips feel a little dry and they feel a little raw, but I think it's from the swatching. I don't think it's from the actual lip color. So there was just a torrential downpour here. So odd for Vegas. However, I am realizing we are into August now and August is sort of like monsoon season down here in the Southwest. I think it's already started in Arizona. This is definitely the worst month weather wise for Vegas because it is still very, very warm. It's probably not as hot as it is in July. Like July you know, there were reports of people falling down in parking lots for whatever reason, but then on the asphalt, they were burning themselves and then they were taken to the ER for like third degree burns or whatever. So it's not that hot, but August is starting to cool down. So it's humid. And I always have to remind myself of that, but thankfully I am going away for two out of the four weeks in August, which we still have to talk about. Anyway, I am going to do a little work because I lost this morning because of some technical issues. Um, so I'm gonna sit down and do a little bit of work and then I do wanna come back and share with you like my favorites and well, we'll talk about it then. I'll be back. Hello, hello. I have to get ready to go out to dinner. I was thinking about wearing this dress. I have on a really old, you know, it's not even worth showing you. It's a really old H&M dress. It's just the most exciting part is up here. It's, it's really boring, but I don't feel like wearing a dress today. I'm gonna put on some pants and a shirt, I think some comfortable shoes. We're just going to Javier's. Did I mention that? We are going to Javier's at Aria. I think I did mention that, which is Mexican. They definitely have a location in Cabo. I think that's the original. Oh my God. Well, it did rain here. However, I think this is the smoke from the wildfires. Can you see the sky? It's just um, like a solid gray. You know, and I woke up this morning with my throat feeling a little kind of scratchy. I thought, Does, I don't feel sick. That's like a different feeling. I thought, oh, maybe I have allergies. I'm just putting two and two together. I think it's from the smoke. All right, let's figure out what I'm gonna wear. I think I'm just gonna wear my trusty Everlane pants that you guys have seen me wear five gazillion times. They're just the elastic waisted tapered pants. We'll do these. And then I think I'll just do my Frankie shop. I think I just have to lint roll it and then it'll be fine. All right, here is my outfit. The Frankie shop blouse has come with a really high vent on the side, so it makes it very easy to tuck it in like just the front. The Everly pants, I decided to go with my Dior loafers. I don't feel like I've worn these in a while. So anyway, did that. And then I put on my Hermes bangle and I am actually, <laughs> I'm testing out a jewelry cleaner. So I took off my wedding ring and my new like diamond bands, but I think I need to do something with my hair. I don't mind that it's looking flat, but yeah, I've got these crazy guys up top. So let me see if I can tame those a little bit. I've got my trusty Anastasia clear brow gel. This is the best for my stubborn flyaways here. There we go. I find this to be a little too crispy for my actual brows, but it is great for these really stubborn hairs. So a little hack. I've been doing this for years and I think most of you know it, but in case you're new to the channel, this is a great hack for any sort of like crazy flyaways. And this hack I learned from a makeup artist when I was on set a long time ago. <laughs> I was automatically gonna go for my Dior little saddlebag since I'm wearing my Dior loafers, but I think I'm gonna bring my YSL clutch. I feel like that looks a little cleaner and I feel like my outfit is kind of androgynous, kind of clean, so that's what I'm gonna grab. Which one though? This one, the super flat one with the silver hardware or the one that's a little bit smaller but expands a little bit more and has the gold hardware. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do the smaller one with the gold hardware just so I can fit some more things in here like my wallet, possibly my vlogging camera, well, my phone, definitely. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this one. And then, so I've been going pretty hard with my Orila from Diptyque. Let me do something different here. Oh, I ordered this and I think I've only worn it once. This is the Creed Neroli Sauvage and I've already forgotten what it smells like, let's see. I like most Creed fragrances, so I bought this blind. I actually ordered it off of NeimanMarcus.com. I think when they're having like a gift card event. Hmm, that's pretty. It's a little bit softer or like rounded versus, what's the Creed that I always wear? The event is for her. That's a little bit like sharper and crisper. I don't feel like either of those. Let's continue with this androgynous feel here. Let me do my Harmonist Hypnotizing Fire. This 
is really definitely much more of like a fall winter fragrance, but I just, I love it. I love it. Every once in a while in the summer, I gotta, I gotta whip it out. So good. I can go overboard very quickly with this fragrance because you don't need a lot and it lingers. Oh my God, it's so good. It's so good. All right, I think I'm ready to go. I just have to toss my things into my clutch. Um, Butters has been fed. She's been played with. I just went out and threw some bollies with her. We threw maybe about 10 and she was panting like crazy. So I think that's enough too with this air quality. It's really awful looking. Other than throwing some stuff in here, I am ready to go to the strip. Good morning. How are you guys? I am ecstatic right now because I was planning on going to Pilates. I would be leaving in about five minutes, but I got a text from my Pilates instructor about 10 minutes ago and she had to cancel. Of course, she apologized for canceling late, but she wasn't feeling well. So I am so sore from working out this past weekend. I went to a 60, like a 55 minute stride class on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I did a 75 minute ultra combo, which is like full body. I literally am sore from like eyebrow to big toe. My feet were tired because there was a lot of jumping in the ultra class. I like, I can barely walk. If I drop something, it's staying on the ground for now. I have to have Butters jump up onto the couch for me to pat her because I can't bend all the way down. <laughs> like that's how sore I am. It's like ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. I thought, well, it'll be great. Pilates will stretch me out or whatever. But I I also, when my muscles are fatigued and kind of weak, I have also like hurt myself at Pilates because, you know, your muscles are compensating for certain things or whatever. And I thought about canceling this morning, but I was like, no, I'll just tell her, like, let's just do like a very stretchy kind of class. And then she canceled and I'm so happy. <laughs> I was like, not a problem. I'll see you in a couple days. I hope you guys are having a fortuitous <laughs> morning as well. I'm just sitting here enjoying some coffee. I just did my word games. I did Wordle and um, connections. I'm really getting into connections. I don't know if you guys play any of the New York Times games, but I like to play Wordle and connections in the morning. I do the mini crossword. I'll like start the crossword at night just to, you know, kind of be doing something. There's another one that I like. Oh, tiles. I'll do tiles every once in a while if I just need to like zone out. But connections is fairly new. I think it's still in beta. You're supposed to group four words together. I remember when connections first came out, it was like pretty obvious. It was like, oh, you know, those four, those four, it was fun. And then all of a sudden it started getting really, really hard where one word seemed like it could go with like two or three different groups of four, or I'd have three words that were very much related, but I couldn't find the fourth. So yeah, it's gotten more challenging, which, you know, makes it more fun. I'm getting my nails done this afternoon. Pretty sure I'll just be getting the same color. So next week I'm actually going out of town again. I think I've alluded to two trips that I'll be taking in August. This is the first of two and I'm going to a wedding. It is my cousin's wedding. The wedding is actually in Rhode Island, but I am meeting another cousin of mine. I have a lot of cousins. Sorry, my microphone receiver just went out. I didn't realize it needed to be charged, but it needed to be charged. I apologize. So this is going to sound very different from the previous clip. Anyway, so both of my parents come from big families. So I have a lot of first cousins on both sides of my family. This is on my mom's side. So I'm going to a cousin's wedding that's in Rhode Island, but I'm meeting another cousin of mine in Tennessee, which is where she lives. And we're going to fly up together. So anyway, I haven't like spent a lot of unadulterated time with my cousins in a long time since I was little, basically. So this will be fun. This will be interesting. My cousin that's in Tennessee that I'm flying to first, she has three daughters. She's asked me to do makeup with them or whatever. So I'm hoping they'll let me vlog. I'm going to course gonna ask them if they're comfortable with that when I get there they may not be you know like in my mind I think they're like they're all like five or six years old but I think they're all like teenagers now my god can you imagine having three teenage girls at home at once I'm sure many of you have gone through that that's terrifying I'm gonna talk to my cousin about that um <laughs> 
Anyway, so it's her half brother that's getting married. I've never met his fiance. I've never met her, so it'll be nice to meet her. After that, we're flying back to Tennessee with my cousin. We're gonna hang out for like another night or so because there is a direct flight from her airport to Las Vegas. So we're gonna stay there an extra night and then fly directly back to Las Vegas. So that's the trip that I've alluded to in the past. That is happening next week. I have to figure out what I'm wearing. So I ordered a bunch of dresses from the Outnet, which is is Net-a-Porter's like outlet because I don't wear dresses that often. I'm like, I just didn't want to spend a ton or whatever. I wanted to get dresses that I liked, but I didn't want to invest too much money. Those should be coming soon. Hopefully some of them will fit. I think I ordered four just to try on. We'll definitely do a try on, <laughs> try on haul when that comes. What am I, I don't know, I guess, is this an unpopular opinion? I don't like weddings. I know I sound like such a Scrooge, but I just don't like them. I find them pretty formulaic and I find them pretty boring. Like all my cousins are going to be there, whatever. And it's going to be a great time. Not all my cousins, that, that would be a mess, but many of my cousins on my mom's side are gonna be there. I just wish we were all getting together, maybe even did a weekend away or something, all of us. That to me would just be so much more fun. Please comment down below if you're not into weddings, that'll make me feel a lot better. Cause every time I say that people are like, really? I'm gonna try and vlog as much as possible. Again, it's gonna come down to how comfortable people are. They wanna be on a vlog on YouTube. I'm like, I really don't get that many views. So it's okay. That is the first trip I'm taking in August. And then the second trip I'm taking in August is one that's becoming kind of an annual tradition. One of my best friends, Matthew, whom you guys have seen on this channel several times, he lives on Greenwood Lake, which is a lake that spans the border of New Jersey and New York. His birthday is around Labor Day. So now I go the week before Labor Day into Labor Day and then leave like right after Labor Day. So that's what I'm doing. I'm really looking forward to that. I'm thinking about just completely taking a break. What I usually do when I'm there is I go to Woodbury Commons, which is a fantastic outlet shopping mall. So I think if I go there, I'll vlog that. But I think the rest of the trip I'm going to not work, which will be really nice. Really, really nice because every trip I've taken, I have vlogged, which is so much fun. And I love watching them back. I love editing them and I love sharing all of the moments with you guys, but it's, you know, it's a lot and it always preoccupies my mind. But those are my two trips in August that I've been talking about. Oh, I have a car update. My Range Rover is in the shop. Just to give you a little bit of background, if you haven't heard this story before, or if you're new to the channel. My Range Rover was hit by an 18 wheeler the day before I left for Morocco last November. It was one of those slow motion accidents where it was like, no, it's like turning into me. And it just turned into like the back of my car because I kind of sped up when I saw it and like swerved. So it was just sort of like the back driver's side, like over the wheel, like that area. The driver in the 18 wheeler and the 18 wheeler was fine. I don't even think there was a scratch on the 18 wheeler. Again, it was just, we were going so slowly, but my whole left side was like dented in. Anyway, I could drive away. I was fine. You know, the cops came, all that kind of stuff. So then I left from Morocco. I came back and then it was the holidays. And so I just kept putting off taking my car in. Again, it was drivable. It was totally fine. It wasn't doing anything weird. And so I was like, all right, I'll just get the body fixed before I have to hand it in because my lease is due, is up soon. Fast forward to this past May, I'm like, I have to get this taken care of. I'm like, let me just do it now. So I bring it to the body shop, whatever. Anyway, long story short, it's still there. It's been there since the end of May and it's now the beginning of August. <laughs> I've had to extend my lease because my lease is up in like a couple weeks and I'm like, I don't know when I'm getting this car back. I spoke to the body shop yesterday. I'm supposed to be getting it back this week sometime. So I've been driving a rental. I've been driving this little Cadillac crossover. It's very nice actually. Don't mind having that. But after a while you're like, I, okay, I just want my car back. So I've had to extend my lease anyway because my new car isn't coming in. I should be getting my Range Rover back at the end of this week. And then the delivery date for my new car, my Porsche has been moved up. Did I mention that already? It's been moved up like a month. I'm so excited. Had I known that, I probably wouldn't have bothered extending my lease because I, it would just be like a two or three week difference since I work from home, essentially. I could probably do without it. Uber if I need to, or borrow my husband's car, you know, whatever. But I extended it anyway, because I thought the Porsche was coming in October. I didn't know when my Range Rover was coming back. Yeah, so that's a quick car update. Well, maybe not so quick, but a car update. Okay, one last thing. I am testing out this new jewelry cleaner. Sorry, I'm reaching over to get it. It's called 
Diamond Drunk, and I believe this is a company started by the same gentleman that started Too Faced Makeup. Is his name Jared? I think it's Jared or something. Same people, and so they have come out with this jewelry cleaner. They asked if I wanted to try it, and I was like, absolutely. I don't know if you guys saw my Milan vlog when I went to go see Luna. She's so great. She's like, I love that you wear my rings all the time. She's like, I always tell people that, you know, her jewelry is meant to be worn all the time. Like my wedding ring, I guess you could consider as more of like a cocktail ring, but I wear it all the time. But it gets really dirty that way. She's like, you have to clean your rings. She's like, they're not that sparkly. So, so she'd be very proud of the fact that I'm trying this out. And I have my wedding ring and the two diamond bands that I bought in Milan. I have them in here right now. They've been soaking overnight. Okay, so it came in this box, really lovely. So it had like the canister in here, it had the soap here, it had this really cool coaster, if you will, here. It comes with this little brush. I'm not sure if it comes with these, but they sent these over. This is a security guard drain cover. So if you want to put this over your sink so nothing falls into the sink, because we've all had a heart attack when our jewelry has even come close to the sinkhole. I'll never forget this. My mother's engagement ring fell down the sink. She was freaking out. My dad had to take apart the sink and he did find it eventually. But anyway, there's that. And then there is this kind of polishing cloth. And what's inside is really cool. So you have this whole thing that pulls up. There is actually a ring hook. So I did put my engagement ring there. And then my two diamond bands I just put in the basket here. And then there is this like plastic piece where you can hang earrings off of. I'm just gonna go over to the sink and rinse these off quickly. You have this. I probably should have done this before rinsing it off, but you have this. I think this is really good if you have rings with like an open back and it gets really dirty in there. You can like scrub it out. Probably great for all of these little nooks and crannies in this particular ring. And one thing Luna warned me actually when I was in Milan regarding putting your jewelry into liquid to clean, she's like, just make sure the liquid, just kind of room temperature, you don't want to shock any kind of stone because you run the risk of them cracking. So a lot of people think they need to use like really boiling hot water. She's like, don't do that. You may shock the stone, obviously depending on what stone you have. Wow, this does look a lot cleaner already because I've been wearing these bands every day they have already gotten kind of scummy but look how sparkly the white diamonds are and I'm gonna use this cashmere cloud towel here's the cashmere cloud towel oh it's so nice so soft <laughs> Ooh, wow. Well, this ring is much more sparkly. I've definitely used other cleaners in the past. I don't feel like my diamonds have ever come out this sparkly. Only when I take them in to get professionally clean, like when Luna cleans my jewelry, does it come out like this. I'm very impressed. Oh yeah, even the black diamonds look sparkly. Look at that. Oh, thanks Diamond Drunk for sending this over. It's very nice. And I know they have a bunch of different like concentrates. That's the soap that I poured into that big jug. I didn't film that, but you just pour it in and then you add water. So they have like, I think maybe six, five or six different uh, scents. So I picked Lemon Drop, but it says here, your mom's outdated and toxic cleaner or the occasional trip to the jeweler for cleaning just won't cut it, honey. Your jewelry deserves more care and a little polish. Allow us to serve you Diamond Drunk, a nightly, oh, nightly, wow, non-toxic cleanser designed to clean your jewelry overnight and leave it sparkling for the morning light. I don't know that I'll do that every night. That's not a habit that I could see myself getting into, but who knows? I could see myself maybe doing it once a week or something. I am quite impressed with how sparkly my diamonds look yeah, yes it is raining again here in vegas it rained yesterday for a little bit and now it is pouring i think i showed you when it was raining yesterday and i think i mentioned that we're starting the rainy season here so i'm not surprised oh man oh, i wish i caught this on film but i live like right in front of this it's very little very little mountain i hesitate to even call it a mountain but here let me turn you around so there's the mountain and right along the top, the top edge of the mountain, I just saw a coyote. Damn, I really wish I caught that. There are lots of coyotes in the neighborhood. We actually saw one walking down the sidewalk the other day. It was just like going out for a walk. I was like, wow, that's a really big dog. And my husband was like, and he stopped. He's like, that's a coyote. And of course we had butters. And uh, yeah, we just turned around. <laughs> we were like, let's go this way. Yeah, so there are coyotes around, which is why I never let butters out by herself. So anyway, 
Miss Butters, it's time to go to school, even though it's rainy out. All right, baby. You ready for school? You ready for school? Good morning. I am just out of the shower. My hair is still wet. I am getting dressed and I haven't vlogged in a couple of days and I'm just trying to remember where I last left you. I think maybe at Javier's when I went out to meet my friend that I used to work with. Anyway, what I did want to do in this vlog was talk about like my monthly favorites. And because I spent the beginning of this month in Europe and I didn't really... <laughs> Didn't really bring that much makeup, if you guys remember. July was really, really a blur, for sure, because then I went to New York for a few days. Anyway, a lot of traveling, which I think impedes my ability to like really test out makeup and get into it or whatever. But all of that to say is that I do have some new favorites in the beauty realm for this month versus last month. I want to start my favorites here in the closet because I do have some fashion favorites. You guys knew I was going to talk about these sneakers. So I got these sneakers when I was in Florence. These are the Gucci screener sneakers, but they have crystals on the Gigi fabric. They're really chunky. They're actually a little bit on the heavier side, but they're so comfortable. The whole shoe is like memory foamed. The sole, the tongue, everything is like memory foamed. Even like the back heel here, they're just so comfortable. They're like walking on clouds and I love them. And I think the fact that they're so garish <laughs> is why I love them. They don't really match with any Anything, therefore they kind of match with everything and since I wear such plain clothing like all black usually all the time I can throw these on and it's fine and I've just been you can tell actually how dirty the soles are I've just been throwing these guys on I love 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 these so I did want to mention them because yes I have been kind of featuring them in some like fashion TikToks I've been doing these have definitely been a favorite of this past month and I would venture to say these are probably gonna show up in like a yearly best luxury purchases from 2023 because because that's how much I've been wearing them. And as I continue getting dressed here, these are definitely a favorite as well. These are some of the newer Dean Davidson earrings that I got. This is part of the, I'm gonna say the Pearl Collection. I don't know if they have a more creative name for the collection, but they sent these maybe a couple months ago. And I just, as you guys know, I just love a hook earring without any backings. I just throw them on and there's just something really classic. Obviously they are pearls. I don't feel like I can't wear them with like an everyday outfit as well. So they're just very versatile and I love that. I love that about most of the Dean Davidson jewelry. I feel like I can wear them for almost any occasion and if I wanted to get dressed up a little bit, you know, change my outfit a little bit, maybe tie my hair back, I could keep these earrings on. But I'm gonna go ahead and kind of do my hair a little bit, do my skincare. Actually, do I have any skincare favorites? Let's see. Yes, I do have some skincare favorites. So the Tatcha Cleansing Balm, the Indigo Cleansing Balm. I started using this a little while ago. This is definitely Definitely new for this past month. I think I featured this, is it in my last vlog or maybe the vlog before? But this is wonderful. It is wonderful. I love that it's fragrance free and I kind of talked about its benefits in that vlog when I first used it, but it has like a really great texture. It's not too oily, but it does break down into an oil. It behaves itself. It doesn't feel like it's just kind of running down my face after I've been like working it in or whatever. It removes my makeup beautifully. But the best part is it leaves my skin feeling really soft. I don't want to say moisturized. I mean, this is a cleanser. It's not meant to moisturize my skin, but my skin doesn't feel like depleted of everything. So it's really effective and like really gentle all at the same time. Another cleanser I've been loving, this is going to be a cleanser full favorites. So I talked about the Fluorosis. Um, this is their, they have a lo much longer name, but this is basically their cleansing oil. This is the size that they have available in the U.S. with this beautiful peony flower. Isn't that pretty? Um, so this is a 210 ml bottle. In terms of a cleansing oil, it's incredible. It is essentially fragrance free but there are a lot of different like floral oils in here or whatever I'm just surprised that it's fragrance free because when you look at the ingredients, you think it's going to be very fragrant, very florally. It's not at all. And much like the Tatcha cleansing balm, it is very, very effective, but it leaves my skin feeling very soft and not like just stripped of its oils or like just overly cleansed. It's really effective at removing makeup, but not removing like everything else that my skin needs. So I have been enjoying this as well. I mean, I think the effect of both of these are pretty similar. I can't say that 
that one does a better job cleaning, but my skin basically feels the same after using these two, just sort of soft and supple without feeling stripped at all. I guess it would just sort of depend on like what form you like. Balms, obviously a little bit less messy, I would say, than oils, but I do know some people are like just diehard cleansing oil fans. I would say you can't go wrong with either of these. And then the other <laughs> cleanser I wanted to mention, like I said, this is a big cleanser month. This is from Lisa Eldridge, the Skin Enhancing Treatment Cleanser. This is almost empty. <laughs> this is such an interesting, interesting formula because it has has a gooeyness to it, and I actually equated it to my Retrouve Luminous Cleansing Elixir. It kind of has the same goopiness and the same gooeyness to it. I don't know that that's for everyone. I think some people just may not like that texture, but I really, really enjoy it. It's thicker than an oil. It has like a squalane kind of like feel to it. See how it's just kind of like goopy? The closest word I can use to describe this is not very complimentary, but it's kind of mucus, it's kind of mucusy, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> It's kind of mucusy. That's it. It is. Anyway, I I love it because I do have very very dry skin. Although I do think this is meant for all skin types. I love like the the ritual that comes along with using this because I really love spending a lot of time kind of like massaging it in. And I know Lisa even intended for this to be like a mask if you wanted it to be. You could just kind of leave it on. I probably haven't left it on as long as she would recommend. But I have really taken my time and just really massaged it in and like taking my time and really enjoyed the whole process you can see it doesn't run or anything so it just feels really really nice on the skin it's a great cleanser just like the other two i mentioned it leaves my skin feeling really soft and supple without it feeling stripped i would say between the three of these i love them all it just depends on like what form you like i've been really enjoying all three of those i kind of go between all of them i've set up like if i have a hard to remove kind of spf on i always like to use an oil for for some reason I feel like that just really kind of breaks it down. If I have a lot of makeup on, I'll use the balm. This one I use like morning and night, so that's probably why it's empty already. That's the skincare favorites that I wanted to share with you. I have some other things that I've been playing with, but I'm still testing them, so maybe they'll appear next month or maybe the month after. But anyway, let me kind of finish getting ready and then we'll move on downstairs. I have some handbags <laughs> to share with you and then of course some makeup. Okay, we're downstairs now and I wanted to share with you some handbags that I have been loving and can't stop using this month. They all happen to be from Lueve. I know, we're not surprised. But I wanted to reintroduce you to my flamenco bag. So I got this a while ago. I would say a year ago, more than a year ago. And I got it with this extra handle, this like whip stitch handle, which I am so, so happy that I got because I feel like more often than not, I'm holding it by this handle versus the strap that it comes with, which is great for crossbody. You may remember this bag because I've talked about it since hauling it. No regrets in purchasing it. However, I don't use it that often. A couple weeks ago, I just went into my room where I kind of keep all my handbags and I was like, why don't I use this bag? what is going on? And I was wearing like an all black outfit. I was like, well, it'll go with this outfit. So I'm just gonna wear it today. So I pulled it out. And ever since then, it has been in this little like Loewe rotation. I love how soft the leather is. I love how easy it is to get into. I believe this is the medium size. They have a ton of sizes now. They have a larger size. I think they have like a tote size. They have smaller one. They have, yeah, a whole bunch of different sizes, but I think this is like, kind of like that original medium size. I mean, you cannot be how supple this leather is. It's supple, but it still has body to it. It's so perfect. I love this color. This handle was extra, but I love, love, love this handle. It's just great. It's a perfect size. It holds everything I need. It has my sunglasses. It has readers. It has my wallet, my keys. Still could fit plenty more. The only thing that it is missing that you may be wondering is it does not have an inside pocket like a little zipper pocket in there. I'm wondering if it's because of the kind of the shape of this bag and how it's meant to be kind of slouchy. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe they just didn't feel like putting a pocket in there, but yeah, I'm just really, really loving it. I'm so glad I resurrected this guy. The second bag that I wanted to mention is the bag that I got in London. So this is the Loewe small puzzle bag. And this bag is fabulous for crossbody. And again, it's one of those bags. It just holds everything that I need. Wallet, sunglasses, readers, 
phone, keys, you know, lip balm, everything. It has this zipper, it has this outside zipper. So I traveled with this as one of my carry-ons to New York. My phone doesn't like totally, totally doesn't fit in here. Like I can't stick it in and zip this up. The top of it sticks out. But if I just need to put my phone somewhere quickly, I need like both my hands and then grab it again quickly. This was perfect. I just slipped it right in here and it would like kind of stick up a little bit and I knew where it was. And like I said, this is just such a great size. Do you see that? A Tide cleaning pen in here. So yeah, this is another bag that I've been loving and I just never thought I would be into this kind of camera bag shape. I always found them kind of boring because they're always just this kind of square. Of course, this one is a little bit more interesting with this like this origami kind of detailing going on, this puzzle. I don't know. I don't know what makes this different or more of like a camera bag versus something like a Chanel flap or whatever. But this shape has always bored me in the past. It's always looked very, very utilitarian. But I think with the details, I was really attracted to it. And you really can't beat like the practicality of a camera bag because it really does fit so much. It's just such a practical shape and it's fantastic. It's so great. And this leather, it's not stiff, but it's stiffer than the flamenco. This is super, super soft leather. This one has like a little bit of a grain to it. I don't know if you can see. It is more supple than the leather I picked for my puzzle bag, the extra large one, the dark gray one, but it's still a little bit stiffer than the flamenco bag. That is the second bag that I've been using a lot this month. And I've come into my office to share with you the third bag that I've been using a lot. And it's in my office because, and I think someone on TikTok made fun of me for this, but a lot of times during the day, even though I work from home, but a lot of times during the day, I'm either in my office or maybe I'm in the kitchen or I have to film some, some stuff upstairs and I have to carry with me like my laptop and my card reader and my camera and extra cards and extra batteries and all this stuff and any paperwork that maybe I have. And so I end up using like a bag in the house, like a tote bag around the house. And so I, I've been using this bag for a lot more, but the reason why it's sitting in this office right now is because of that. I was using this bag to kind of cart my stuff around uh, around the house the other day. So this is the Loewe, I think it's called like the inflated anagram bag. So the anagram is their like logo and it's this. So it's the L, it's a script L and then it's flipped and flipped and flipped. So it, the reason why it looks inflated is because it has, it's rubber, this is all rubber. <laughs> so it's like, I was equating it when I first got it, I was equating it to one of like Butter's toys. Like it's that kind of hard rubber, but I just love it because it's such an interesting take on a basket bag. You know, the ones that are so popular during the summertime. This is black, so it's, it suits me much better. And then it has this inner bag here, which has a drawstring and it's just cotton and it comes out, uh, which is really handy. So because this is rubber and because this is cotton, I don't feel you know, too precious about it, like the other Loewe bags that I've uh, been using. Their leather, sometimes I feel like, you know, don't scratch it, <laughs> don't come too close to my bag. This bag is just a lot more casual, a lot more fun, and it is uh, of a much easier kind of silhouette. So I feel like I can just grab this and go and just like throw stuff in here. Uh, like I took Butters to the vet the other day. She's fine. I took her to the vet for just an annual um, and I just grabbed this bag and I just like threw my stuff in there. So it's a Loewe kind of month. But those are the three handbags that I have been rotating all month. They're all Loewe and I love them dearly. Hello. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm actually filming off of my iPhone today because I like this cinematic mode where it kind of blurs out the background, but I have to like angle it a little bit differently so that I'm in the frame properly. But this way you can see all of my brushes and they're organized. They're organized. There's just a lot of them. Uh, but anyway, I thought I would do the beauty portion of this favorites video as I'm getting ready. I'm going to start with the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint and the, you guessed it, <laughs> Weston Atelier Liquid Super Loaded in Peau de Peche. So I've been playing around with adding Peau de Peche or Peau de Rosé into this. And I like the Peau de Peche a little bit more. The Peau de Rosé, I still love, love, love to use underneath my eyes as like an under eye primer. Let's do that today. Um, so here's the Peau de Rosé and I'm just gonna be using my favorite. So everything I'm using from here on out is a favorite. And I'm just gonna squeeze out one drop. You really don't need a lot of this product. A little bit does go a long way. And I'm gonna grab a concealer brush. This is the Sephora Pro Concealer. 
number 71. I have not used this in so long, ever since I got the BK Beauty brush. That's similar to this, but I like the BK Beauty one more. It's dirty, so I'm using this one. And I'm just gonna apply some of the Pot de Rosé underneath my eyes. Oh my God. I love how it just brightens everything up. This lighting, I think, is throwing everything off. Hold on. There, I think that's more even. I think it was too bright. It was blowing everything out and you couldn't really see anything. So anyway, that was the Pot de Rosé underneath my eyes. Now I'm going to shake this up and squeeze out a little bit of this skin tint. Then add a little bit of the Pot de Peche. So just one drop. So I squeezed out that much of the skin tint and now I'm gonna squeeze out one drop of the Pot de Peche. Bobbi Brown foundation brush, just mix it all in on the back of my hand and then start to apply. I really like what the Pot de Pache does, not only to the finish of the skin tint, because the skin tint is, is fairly radiant, but the liquid super loaded adds like a luminosity. And I think it also cools the shade down a little bit, which works better for my skin tone. Look at that, isn't that pretty? It's so natural. The skin tint doesn't have a ton of pigmentation. It's a really light coverage foundation. I just think it's great. It's great for me <laughs> because that's what I happen to like, but I think it's just really nice for the summertime. If you're not looking for like, you know, a full beat kind of look, I think it's just gorgeous. It just does like enough just to kind of like smooth everything out, even things out a little bit, but doesn't like completely cover up your skin. So yeah, just really enjoying the hourglass. I think it's long lasting too. I don't wear my makeup for that long. You know, I put it on in the morning and I take it off uh, around dinner time. So I do wear this for, we'll say eight to 10 hours and I haven't seen it, you know, break up or do anything weird or look cakey or whatever. When I did my full day wear test, obviously I didn't add anything to it and I felt like it looked a little bit cakey around my mouth but ever since I started adding this to it I don't know if it just thins it out a little bit I haven't seen that happen so I really really love this combination for sure all right now if you feel like you need a little bit of coverage underneath the eyes like the Westman Atelier what it does I think is it just really highlights and smooths and blurs your under eye skin but there isn't a lot of coverage and so if you have a lot of discoloration underneath your eyes I would go for something like this NARS this is their light reflecting under eye brightener and I have it in the shade Night Swan and it's really really lovely I don't find it very thick or cakey or just too much you know like I like to leave my makeup very light handed looking and this allows me to do that. So I'm just going to pick up just a little bit with my fingers here. And this has great staying power. I thought it wore really, really well throughout the day. Anytime I've worn it, I've worn it a couple times since I tried it for you guys. It blends in really easily, but there's coverage and it doesn't budge all day. There's a little bit of tackiness to it. So I think that prevents it from moving too much, but you may want to powder over it if you don't like that tacky feeling. I'm very impressed with this. Very, very impressed. So another favorite of mine, I guess I'm a little bit <laughs> surprised by this. So this Makeup Forever HD Skin Twist and Light Powder. First, I thought it was gimmicky. I thought, okay, it's got like three different powders in here. You have to twist it, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I thought that was sort of like its selling point, but they actually sent over a couple of shades for me. So this one is two medium, which I prefer to the light shade because the light shade has a lot of micro glitter in there and I'm not down for that. So this has very little micro glitter, if any. So if you twist this whole component here, powder kind of appears at the bottom and then you stick your brush in and you pick it up that way. I don't know if you can see because it's translucent powder, but I have some right here and it just makes your skin look really smooth. Like I said, without like a lot of the, the micro glitter. So it gives you like a soft satin kind of sheen, but not that sparkle, which I don't like. Anyway, let me go ahead and apply this and I'm just gonna apply some over the NARS. Okay, in terms of bronzer. You guys know I've been going really hard with the Soleil De from Surat. This is their artistic bronzer. I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. I love it as bronze. I love it as blush. It's just a wonderful shade. So I'm just going to apply some of that. I love that the undertone, can you see the undertone of this bl um, blush? 
<laughs> of this bronzer on me has a little bit of red in there and that is my favorite. I feel like that mimics a sun-kissed look. And in terms of blush and highlight, I've really been enjoying this Blush and Glow palette from Hourglass. I don't know, I don't know why I feel like I'm reaching for this one more than their other palettes. I have the Butterfly one here. You know, I enjoy this one too. I just think there are more powders in here that I would use. And in fact, I would use all of the powders in here. I feel like all of the other ambient lighting palettes, except for maybe the original Unlocked, I still love that one. I just wouldn't use all of them. Like, I don't think I would use these two, maybe the Diffuse, but I wouldn't use this shade and maybe this shade. But anyway, I digress. I have been using this one quite a bit because I really love the blushes. I really love the highlights. These two highlights are really beautiful. And this is great if I need like a little, a little extra like setting powder or something like underneath the eyes. So yeah, I've been loving this. And this blush I find to be very, very unique. This one is Mood Flush. I don't know if this blush is new to this palette, but I don't remember a solid blush like this in their line. I just remember like the marbled ones. Anyway, let me go ahead and apply this one since I was just talking about it. Hourglass blushes are always so pretty, but they're really, really pigmented. Go slow if you're gonna use an hourglass blush. Um, and then highlight, I've been loving this highlight. That I think is part of the regular line. That's the Metallic Strobe Powder in Celestial Strobe Light. This whole Metallic Strobe Powder from Hourglass, it makes your skin look so glassy. I'm gonna use this cheek brush from Sonia G. And this is a brush that has a really light touch to it. And I'm using it because even with that light touch, do you see how intense that highlight is? It is, whew, it is gorgeous. I'm just gonna take this cheek brush and buff it in a little bit more. Okay, and for eyes, now you guys have not seen me play with this on camera, but this is the Suku Liquid Luster Eyes. I've been playing with this off camera and let me just show you. So it is a liquid eyeshadow. It comes, you know, with this doe foot applicator. It is almost like sheer light, but look at that finish. Isn't that so incredible? When I first, I think I swatched this for you guys. When I first swatched this, I was like, oh my God, like what am I looking at? It has this sort of like latex finish to it because they're not overly pigmented. So they're not super scary to use. I just like to swipe some on my eyes and they have this kind of like powdery feel. Like they don't feel like super wet, even though they're kind of like this cream liquid eyeshadow. So I just put some on. So I've got my Sonia G Crease Pro and I just blend out the edges a little bit and touch up if I need to. You could definitely use your fingers with this. You guys know I like using a brush and you can build. Do you see how the color's getting a little deeper? So you can build, but it's the finish of these eyeshadows that I love. Isn't that so pretty? It's like this really beautiful subtle pigmentation, but the finish, you've got that like really interesting sheen to it. It's just so cool. This shade that I've been using is shade number 02. And they did also send me 101, but you can see this one is more of like a warmer kind of gold mushroom color. And I just, it's its beautiful too, but this is the shade that I've really been loving. Cause I think it, I don't know, it just works for my mood and it works more like every day. And I just love that it's not that wet because it just makes it so much easier to use, you know? this has definitely been a favorite of mine this past month. I'm so glad that I can finally show it to you because I've just been playing with it like off camera and I'm like, ooh, I'm like, I definitely have to use this like the next time I go out and then I'll forget and then I'll use it off camera again. Anyway, been really loving this. Let me go ahead and curl my eyelashes. I don't think I have any mascara to speak of. I've just been using the same ones. So I'll come back and talk about lips. Oh wait, before we talk about lips, I just wanna share with you the Sisley Fito Cold Star Waterproof in Mystic Gold. So this is their newest shade that they came out with for like their summer collection. And I love this shade here. Let me do a, a swatch of this. And look how pretty that is next to that Suku luster eyes. Anyway, this has a beautiful, like smooth metallic sheen. And I love how this gold is, it's almost like an antique gold. Not so much green in there, but it's not a really bright yellow gold. So anyway, I think it works really well as an eyeliner. There's a lot of brown in there. And I've been loving tight lining and using it on my waterline. It gives me just a nice little shimmer, a little accent. 
opens up my eyes a little bit. Yeah, so there it is with and without. This waterproof eyeliner does not budge at all. Once it sets down, it is good to go. Now for lips. Really enjoying the Sufu Moisture Rich Lipstick in this shade 128, I believe it is. It's a very shimmery coral shade, but I love this formula because it's not overly pigmented. So you can see on my swatch there, it's um, like a medium pigmentation and I really love that with lipsticks. This formula is incredible. It's so beautiful. It has like a similar sort of idea to the Liquid Luster Eyes. The Liquid Luster Eyes, not quite as shimmery or, or shiny, glossy as the lips, but there's a shine, but like an, a dullness to it, which is why I keep describing these as having kind of like a, like a latex kind of um, sheen to them. And this has kind of like a dulled shine to them. It's not like uber wet looking. So I really enjoy that. There are actually a couple more lipsticks that I have been kind of rotating between with the Suku. The Sicily Sheer Ginger. This is uh, one of their newer shades in this Fito Rouge Shine formula. This is part of their summer collection, much like that Mystic Gold eyeliner. So here's the Sicily and here's the Suku. So this Suku has like a little bit more of like a watermelon tinge to it. And this has like a little bit more like reddish orange to it. Both formulas are really creamy, really nourishing feeling, super soft. And I love, love, love all of these <laughs> Fito Rouge shines. Um, so that's Sheer Ginger. And then the last one, very similar in formula. I'm, you know, I'm like a broken record. I just really like nourishing lip products. And this is Rouge Volupt Candy Glaze in the shade number 15. So this is a more nude shade compared to the other two. So there is number 15. So this one is great for like every day. I've been like throwing this into my bag if I feel like I just need to bring something in case. It goes with like every makeup look because of how neutral it is. Those have been my favorite lips and those have been my favorite beauty products. Like I said, I feel like a little bit of a broken record, especially with the Westman Atelier Super Loaded and I've been using a lot of the same products, you know, all month for you guys on camera. I guess that just proves my point then, <laughs> that they're my favorites. But definitely check out the Suku Liquid Luster Eyes. I just think there's, it's such an interesting formula because they're subtle and they're beautiful and the finish is different. And I think you'll really kind of get a kick out of these. Suku is available through Selfridges. I'll link it down below in my description box. Um, it is available through Selfridges, but they're not sold here in the US. Well, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this sort of different format for my favorites, just sort of walking around and talking about things that I've been loving and, you know, putting on the favorites as I go through them. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next vlog.